Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Rick Thompson. And I'm Landon Oaks. Landon, we were talking uh, earlier this morning about um, the idea about how to know your data. Um, when you're, let's say you're doing, uh, building some reports, you're an analytics engineer, maybe you're a Power BI report builder, um, and there can be a tendency just to look at the data, look at the data structure, and think, okay, I know the data well enough to start building the report. But we were talking about how it really helps to understand the business behind the data to really make sure you're delivering good insights and, and good decision-making tools in the report. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> this is actually something I, I try to coach our team on any chance I get. Um, it just gives you another layer that you can look at and understand to help kind of fit the data together and answer questions that you might might look very confusing at first. Um, if you can think about the business reason behind something, you know, maybe my invoice date was a couple months ago. It doesn't have a ship date, but I'd expect it to, right? Um, you can kind of learn the business behind that and know, okay, there was a delay. Maybe I should go look for some delay data or something along those lines, right? So it gives you that extra layer that you wouldn't normally have. Yeah, and I think it's so important. I think sometimes we'll engage with a client and they'll – Maybe not have an expectation, but sort of think, hey, you, you've got access to our API. You can just build the report. Um, and if, um, and if there's a lot of sort of local knowledge in the business that will create a way better outcome. I mean, obviously, there are certain things, certain business rules and so on that we're not going to pull out of thin air. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, really understanding what are the processes you know, how are the data, how are the systems, the transactional systems where this data is residing, how are they used to really understand the logic? Um, to look for things like you just, that example you just gave, you know, be aware of that when you're looking at the data as a report builder, if you actually understand the flow of the processes behind the data, it can help you do a much better job of getting right to the heart of the matter. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. It gives you that, that idea of, Maybe this isn't actually wrong. Maybe this is right, and this is something else I can surface and get some really good insight to these people with. Um, and if you know the business reason behind that, you know, it's much easier to make those decisions if this is wrong or this is right. Yeah. Yeah, so to get to that, it requires some discovery time. And actually having the data engineer or the, the uh, analytics engineer talking to the business people mm -hmm. yep. and understanding processes, often that will come out of just discussing what the report at hand needs to do. So, you know, if you've got a goal of increasing first-time fix for, for trouble tickets or something like that, you know what the goal is, but then it's really helpful to understand, okay, what is the flow? How does a ticket come in? How does it get processed? How does it get closed out? That type of thing. And I think it can be tempting to skip that step of going deeper on it. So, you know, our advice to people who are, are building reports or business people who are interacting with building uh, people building the reports is really go deeper. Make sure there's a deep understanding about it. It's, it can be tempting to skip that and get right into the data, especially if you're a data person. Yeah. Know, it's oh, fun yeah. to get your hands dirty <laughs> and just get in the data and figure it out, especially if the relationships are set up already. You think you've got it, but don't assume you do. Go much deeper. And I think there's an art to that discovery process, mm -hmm. to that interview process. And it can be hard sometimes for a data person to relate to the business person and vice versa. So it really takes a, a special kind of a talent to be able to, to walk both sides of those, I think. How do you coach your, your engineers on, on how to do that? <clears throat> yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, in general, like the overarching rules, be curious, right? Like ask questions, understand, you know. Um, I, we always like to start with kind of a high level, like, just tell me about this process. Like to your point, like we're working on tickets. Tell me about, tell me about it, you know, give kind of give an open-ended question just to start to really understand the flow of how these tickets get created, how they're managed, you know? Um, and a lot of times we find that sometimes that'll lead down rabbit trails. That'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, we had this one issue. Um, and it's still plaguing us to this day, right? Like yeah. it'll reveal things that you wouldn't have normally found. Right. Um, but even beyond that, you know, you get that initial walkthrough, right? Next thing you need to do is you need to go put it, 
compare it to the data. Start to say, okay, this is what they told me. This is what I'm seeing. If you see outliers, that's that's a great time to put that in front of them and say, hey, you said this. This is what I'm seeing. What does this mean? Yeah. You know. What are there some examples of things that trip you up? Like I can I can think of one that uh, I've been tripped up on before, where someone's using, say, an ERP system. They're they're using it in a non-standard way, and so you start seeing weird data, and you're like. You say, wait a second, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, we use that field to record something totally unexpected. Are there other things like that that you can sort of keep your antenna up to watch out for? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's a great one, and that's a pretty common one what yeah. you just mentioned there. Um, a lot of times, too, is there'll be, I mean, one of the biggest things that you're going to find is that while they think that, you know, this is the flow that all of their employees are using, depending on who you're talking to, it, there might be something slightly different. And you're yeah. going to find that out with them. Um, and it's useful for, for the business user to see these holes and, you know, what people might not be doing that they thought they were doing all along. Um, That's a great point. But it's also useful to you, right? Because now you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen that exact thing that you're talking about where the person you're doing the discovery with and interviewing um, thinks they know how it's being used mm -hmm. because they maybe even were in on defining it or they used to do it two yeah. or three years ago. <laughs> but when you get to the person who's actually doing the work, you find out it's being used differently. And yep. so that yep. brings up another point, you know, get, giving access to the analytics engineer to the people who are doing the work can shortcut a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it can kind of limit those side conversations that that people need to have then come back to you and um yeah interviewing the person directly involved is sometimes incredibly helpful yeah and i think uh, often uh, a company will you know not want to do that for good reason everybody's busy we have the the sort of the the stakeholder who understands the big picture mm -hmm. they'll be able to do it but sometimes you need to be able to drill further and i, I can think of experiences where we've gotten sort of uh, hung up because we didn't have that data and and weren't given access to that person. Um, and then finally, when we did, we solved it quickly. So, uh, you know, I would uh, I would recommend also that people just push hard for that, yep. that direct access to the user. The other thing that you sometimes discover as you're doing this discovery process is that there are data sources that people didn't really think need to be considered. Like you think, okay, well, we gave you, we gave you access to the main ERP system, that's all you need, but it turns out there's a critical data source. And I've seen that go haywire, where um, people thought there were one or two data sources that were important. Turned out there were nine <laughs> once, <laughs> once you did yeah. the deep dive. Nine maybe to get to the, to the data they want mm -hmm. or the answers they want. So, so important to figure that out because if you go far down the road of trying to build reports and it turns out you're actually missing stuff and you don't realize it for a while, that can result in a lot of rework. Yeah, a lot of rework or a lot of, you know, like almost Band-Aid duct tape fixes, right? Like yeah. I'm going to put just a manual fix on this um, to fix this one issue. Well, it's going to happen again if you don't understand why that issue is there in the first place. Yeah. Um, and to your point, sometimes it's even like an Excel file, right? Somebody yeah, right. pulls the data into an Excel file, does some magic. The and infamous then magic sheet. Yeah, yeah. And nobody knows that that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> now we all know. <laughs> yeah, we do. And if you find that there is a magic sheet, literally there's something called a magic sheet run on the other direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We run into that. More than once. All right. Well, I think we've covered it here. I, I think the point we really wanted to make was as much as it's fun to just get into the data, especially the data's in the data lake, you've got a semantic model, you've got relationships set up, um, you just kind of want to get in there and start producing cool stuff, um, take a beat. Make mm -hmm. sure you understand the business behind it. Make sure you've done good discovery with yep. the business users and drill further if you can. Get to the Get to the people who are actually maybe even entering data or yeah, running yeah. the process, if possible. Um, it's amazing how often you'll discover there's something that you're taking for granted or even your customer stakeholder, even if it's an internal customer, let's say you're an internal BI team, that that stakeholder is taking for granted that is going to end up hanging you up. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thanks, Landon. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.